So today I'm using um, a 9 by 12 canvas, and it's just a canvas panel, okay? I like these, they're nice to work on. And I'm using the colors Ultramarine Blue, Cad Red, Burnt Sienna, Black, White, and Cad As Yellow. As you see by our painting, we have a lot of orange in our painting. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix up some colors to complement that for the background. The orange is complementary to the blue and the yellow is complementary to violet. So I was thinking we have a little orange umbrella here so we can have some blue over here then we'll move over and make some mauve or some violet over here for the uh, for some of the yellows. So that will be really pretty and be nice and complimentary. Since my canvas is fairly small, I'm just going to use a smaller flat brush. It's a flat synthetic and it's about a size 8. So let's make some blue paint. But we want to lighten it up a bit. I don't want the background to be too dark. So I'm just going to go with blue so it will complement the orange. Okay. So we will just put some blue on here. Nice. I find for backgrounds you need to have your paint wet. And what I'm going to do is, what I've been doing a lot, is getting my magic white. And I've explained that to you in several paintings before, but that's magic white and I gave you a recipe to that. It's in the description. And you, when you mix up your magic white, just add water for misting, but not for mixing with your paint. So I'm just going to put that on there so that, there we go, that will help the paint stay wet longer and it will also help it to spread and you won't have as, to use as much paint and you'll see that as you come over it will start to lighten up on its own because there's white. See there's white on the canvas now. So that will help your backgrounds, that will help all your backgrounds. Whenever, you, whenever you're doing a background for flowers or you know, any, any still life or anything. This is a big help because then you can don't have to use as much paint. Look at that. And that will just spread really nice. You can go over nice ways before you start getting into the mauve or violet. Okay, so this is going to complement the orange umbrella. Okay, so the umbrella is going to go over that blue. So we have complementary colors and you'll see how pretty that will look. You've seen it by the, uh, by the painting I showed you. Our finished painting. So I'm going to go over to about here. I would say not completely, not halfway, but I'd say cut it in thirds. One, two, three. Because when we go into the right here, we're going to add some red. Start getting it into a more lighter purple color. And I'm going to add white because I don't want it to be really dark. But I'm going to make it dark enough so that when we come over, we'll be able to lighten up again. Okay, so let's go here. Now, because I have that magic white on, that will blend really nice with that blue. Okay, so there we go that will transition into each other. Really pretty. There we go. So when I put the water in the bottle, I put in my uh, about a third of my Magic White recipe and then I added the rest of water. So no matter how big your bottle is, just put in about a third of your Magic White recipe and then the rest in water. like. Because you don't want the uh, too, you don't want it to stay wet too long. You have to use a hair dryer if you do. It's okay. So I'm going to use my white, just white this time on my dirty brush. I'm going to bring that over here. I might even come into this again, lighten up even more. pretty, isn't it? Look. I'm pushing hard to get some of that extra paint off my brush. 
just picking up all that white because my brush is pretty dirty with those other colors so that's a good thing because look at the colors you're getting now look how pretty that is. see look I'm pushing it really hard so I can get all that extra colors off my brush it's almost like a rainbow effect what I want to do is I want to get this over here a little bit I'm going to add some more white here and just move my way over just to lighten it up a small bit. I find it a little bit dark. That's better. That's nice. There we go. that again. Get it over here a bit more because I want to blend that in nicely there. A little bit more white. See the difference that magic white makes? Right? It started to dry a little bit on me because I got more water than magic white and uh, that's what I want. I don't want it to stay wet for hours. I want it to just stay wet for long enough so I can blend those colors. Now I know you can do that with water. But the only thing with the water, it thins out your paint, but the magic white will just, um, it don't change the color, or it don't change the transparency of your paint itself, because there's white in the magic white, see? It lightens up your colors, but it won't, it'll make it, and it'll even make it more opaque, but it won't, uh, with just plain water, you miss plain water, your paints become transparent and then your um, canvas will come through. Okay. Nice. That's what I want. That's exactly what I want. Now when that dries, or use a hair dryer, we're going to put our tree on. And um, we'll probably use a pattern for the umbrella and the boots. Now you can use the same brush for the tree trunk. Because it's chiseled edge, so you can touch and on the chisel edge and we'll bring in our tree. You could also draw your tree out with chalk first if you want so you can get the I shape I have this in landscape because I want the tree to come up and over. If that was the tree was coming up this way and over I would use portrait. I mean you can do that but then the umbrella you won't have as much room for the umbrella so you have to keep an eye out what way you want to put your canvas portrait I usually, if you got a tall building like the uh, Eiffel Tower, yeah, you would put it up portrait way because the Eiffel Tower will be taking up all that space and that's what you would need. Okay, so that's how you do that. Now we'll go with our tree. This way, if you make a mistake or you don't like it, you can always erase the chalk and then you can start over. But if you put paint on there, it's going to be a mess if you try to get it off. So we need to leave room for the uh, umbrella and the boots, which is about here, which is about halfway over. Okay, so then we'll come uh, come in about um, a fourth. Okay, just break it up into fours, and then come in about a fourth more right here. So we're going to go in here. We're going to go up and over and out. Okay, good. And then we will add your branches that you want. So I'm going to send you a copy of the, my painting so you can have something to go by. All right. Okay. All right, so now that's, you know, and you can add smaller limbs if you want to. It depends on what you want. And... Get your chiseled edge brush. We're going to put paint on it and we're going to follow those lines, okay? So, just go into your burnt umber or burnt sienna. If you don't have burnt sienna or burnt umber, just use brown and a bit of black. Okay? I love that burnt sienna. Beautiful, rich color, isn't it nice? Alright, so we'll have it nice and dark so we can... Add some highlights to our tree. That's a nice color. So touch on your chiseled edge. 
all right and then push and then come up and follow along that line. Now you may need to go back and get more paint as you can see. Don't panic. Just go get more paint. Alright, and then pull through so you get a skinny edge. And then you start where you left off. Push. Push hard. And then as you come up here you can lift up a bit. Okay? You want too thick up here, but we're going to have smaller branches so start where you start lifting up a little bit to get a skinnier edge right there okay if you don't get the skinnier edge right away don't worry about it we can always put a skinnier edge at the end with a smaller brush touch push lift 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 all right good we'll use another brush to do the ends pull out good and then we'll do another one see how much easier it is when you got you have it drawn out with chalk now you might say your paint's coming off why aren't you using the magic oil um, I don't think I really need it right now I'm um, not using it because I don't want to take time out to use a hair dryer right now <laughs> Don't push as hard this time, just, you know, depending on how skinny you want your limbs, don't push as hard, all right? Touch and push a little bit, okay. Touch and boop, there it is. That's a good one. Little one down here. Like I said, don't push too hard. All right, there we go. And that should do it kind of weird looking isn't it but we want this to be kind of a whimsical looking painting right yeah it's nice there we go you want to fix up your trunks so that they look like they're in with the tree kind of give them round edge there right you want them to look like they're coming right off the tree good I like my liner brush for this part. Uh, you, you can have any round brush, or, but I want to make some nice thin lines. Just using my burnt sienna and black again. And I'm going to adjust this here. And then I'm going to come out and pull out these smaller lines. See that? Add a bit of water. See my water dripping here? So that won't drip on the canvas as long as you dip it into your paint and roll it around. Alright? And then it will move much better. So I'm just going to add some of these smaller limbs just so I can decide where I want my leaves. There we go. Use our palette knife for this. Let's take some yellow, some red, okay? Never mix them together. I'm just going to dab them on here like this. Just tap them on like that. Okay? So dab them on wherever you want them. So all you're doing is taking some red and some yellow, not mixing it. You're putting it on there like that. Tap, 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 tap. So the knife is making some really nice shapes. All right. Pick up some red and yellow again. It's pretty, isn't it? Just tap them on wherever you want them. Use your 
Um, use your branches. Okay, use your branches for a guide. It's kind of a, a pretty easy painting. A little bit different than what I normally do. I'm trying some new things so I can give you um, give you a variety of paintings to do rather than be just landscapes and say and I don't and also you know I want all my paintings to have the same techniques I want to be able to show you different things that you can do with different tools too right you know different tools you can use and different ways you can get certain techniques because it's more fun when you have uh, you know different ways of doing things Pretty colorful, isn't it nice? All right, so we go with more yellow. You can also put the yellow on first, like this, and then put red on after. But I like kind of mixing two of them together. So you could do that if you want to, like that. So there's no right, no right or wrong way. It's just, just whatever way you want to do it. Experiment with it, okay? So. Look at those pretty colors. And because I'm mixing the yellow and the red together, you're getting all these values of so different yellows and reds. Not a big lot, but enough. That's pretty, isn't it? Simple, loose, you know, so nothing complicated. Yeah, you can even turn your knife around. Let's get some hanging down here a little bit. Maybe there's some just falling off here. You know, maybe they're just falling around. It's falling down. It is fall. Let's just let them fall to the ground. More yellow. I don't want to be just red. Okay. Turn your knife this way and that way so that they look like they're falling in different ways. some down here on the bottom. These are a little thicker. Because these are on the ground, okay. some of those across here, across there. Pretty, isn't it? It's nice and colorful. Now when that, uh, when we get all this on and then it dries, then we're going to put on our boots and our umbrella. So keep this further down, closer to the end of the canvas there. Okay. There we go. 
go. That's it. Let's fill in all the holes down here. Down here we can close it in down a bit here. If there's any gaps up around the top part, that's fine because it looks like the leaves are falling, right? The leaves are falling. Now I want to leave space for the umbrella and the boots. So I don't want to, if you want to add more leaves falling when you get that on, then you'll be able to do that. But I think I'm happy with that. So there we go. Now this is the pattern that I use for the... But see, that fits my 9 by 12 canvas. Now if you're doing a 16 by 20 canvas, what you can do is you can... Because the tree is pretty simple. You don't need to draw so that So what you could do is crop the, your picture the pattern that I give you, crop it. If you have some way to crop it, most people, I think, on your phone or you know, on your computer, you can just bring it into a photo editor and just crop it out to the umbrella and the boots, and then you can print it off to the size that will fit your canvas, okay? And, and that will be your whatever you want. If you want a smaller boots and umbrella, you can, or larger. Depends on how much you want of your canvas you want to fill up. So I want to fill up so this is pretty well perfect for 9 by 12. So when that dries, I'm going to trace this here onto my canvas, okay? So as you can see, I drew the pattern on. I just used my pattern, and I just taped it onto my canvas, and I used carbon paper. You can see I got some paint on it because it didn't dry completely. But uh, yeah, so I just put that underneath there. And I put it on there, and then I traced it on with a pen, and voila! Now we'll paint it. So this is a reference photo I got from Pixabay, and um, I thought it was so cute. I thought, you know, this is a pretty easy painting, so hopefully we can get the rest done uh, pretty. So let's go with starting with the umbrella. I'm going to use a small filbert brush because they got these little round areas and see how the filbert brush has some round top to it and it's flat but it's round and it will go around those nice areas that are a bit round see so you'll put that up against that and that will help keep you inside the lines some people say they have a hard time staying inside the lines you can also use tape, and you can tape off the lines if you're having a hard time staying inside the line. Say you're having a hard time staying inside the line. Just put the tape right over on top of the line, and then you will then stay inside the line, okay? When you take it off, then the paint won't go on your background. All right, All right so we so will mix up some orange, orangey color. I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to that one. Just to darken it up a small bit, just so we'll have it a little bit darker on the top there. More orange. A little burnt sienna. Just a, a little bit of a shaded color for the top part there. Okay, so we'll just fill that in. And we'll just take our time getting around those lines there. Okay. See how that brush really helps? Okay. See those lines really help. All right. Now if you do end up going, I went inside a little bit there, so I'll just take it out when I do my other orange. We'll go over, we've got a line here, so we'll skip over that line. Try to remember where your lines were, because we may have to fill them in. Alright, so. Let's fill that in. Good, we get one more. Nice. Now we will 
we'll do the inside. So clean your brush so you can get that dark off there. So pick up your yellow and your red. I didn't mix it totally because I don't want I want to mix it on the canvas. Here we go. I'm just gonna mix it in here. A little bit more red. Trying to keep that line there so I'll know where it is when I go over it with a bit of black. Alright, so try and stay inside that line. If you have a really hard time, use some tape. Alright, so let's get some more of this. You try to keep those lines so you can see them because we need to go over those. If you have a problem, just get a little bit of cardboard. But the lines have to be straight, or you can get something and sh and cut it out to that. See if I don't mix the red and the yellow together, see how you get the separation of colors there? We can use a smaller brush to fill in some spaces here. Okay. Might need a smaller brush. So change brushes if you need to, okay? I'm just taking my chances here now. <laughs> Probably get myself in trouble. Alright. Let's get a bit more yellow. See, red is a very strong color, so you'll find that if you add a little bit too much red to your yellow, you're going to get mostly red. So you have to try to get more yellow than red, and then you end up with nice bright color. It's cute, isn't it? So we'll fix up the inside of a smaller... I'm, I'm after, you know, missing some spots, so I'm going to get a small brush to do that. A very small brush. A very small round brush. Like this here. It's got a tip on it, see? So I'll use that to fill in the spots that I missed. That's better. Good. So let's paint them in black. Let's see. Let's see. Because we're going to have different shades. So we're going to have gray, black. And so I'm going to go with black first. Small flat brush. Really tiny. And it's flat. I'm going to... I think I'm just going to go ahead and paint it black. Then we'll add the rest of the colors after. I think this will be the easiest way for you to do it. At 
leave a little space there so you'll know where the boots join. There we go, that looks cool. Now using the same brush, make sure it's nice and chiseled edge. Okay, see how thin it is? I'm going to add this little I'm not pushing very hard because if you do you're gonna get a big blob. Just go right on the chiseled edge and I'm barely touching the canvas and being very careful because especially where you're working with black now you can use a marker if you want to if you want to use um, a sharpie that probably be the best bet for this you don't have to always use acrylic paint but if that's what you want to do then take your time and get it on there with a chiseled edge brush but if you're you know you want to make it easy for yourself and you want to uh, get this done Definitely, you certainly can use a Sharpie or a marker. Okay, so it's a little bit thick up there. That's why you need to probably use your your marker. So I just kind of I'll leave I'll fill that in down there, and then I'll add a little highlight to it after. And I, when that dries, I could probably put over a bit of orange on it to cover that up because it made a mess. I'm going to get a really tiny brush. I might just use my liner brush, it'll be easier. Or maybe a toothpick. Let's see. Yeah, maybe a maybe a toothpick. That little tiny piece hanging out up there. I'll try that with a toothpick. And like I said, you can use a Sharpie. There it is. Alright, that looks nice. So all I have to do is add a little highlight to the boots. Take that out and fix it up. Add a little highlight to this, just to clean it up. Clean up a little, few little things here, a little bit of black lines here. So we'll, you know, a few little things and uh, that'll be it then. That's a pretty simple painting, pretty quick. Might add a little highlight to the tree here. Let's say the sun is coming in from the left, so we'll add some highlight on the left side of the tree and on the left side of the boots and a little bit on um, coming in through the sun is coming in through here so it'll hit off 
that right kind of right part of that uh, umbrella there. So we'll we'll do that next. So with a small flat brush, chisel edge, okay. I'm going to do the final, we're going to call this the final details because everything, the major things are done. We got the shapes, we got the colors on. So all we need to do now is do our highlights and maybe add a few more little leaves falling down because it's a little bit of open negative space. We call that negative space. We don't want a big lot of negative space. That's what that means. If you ever hear anybody say negative space, it's the space that's empty. It's around it's around your paint, uh, your objects and your your shapes. I'm going to take that and, and bring it down a bit. It's going to be hard to cover up. It's really hard to cover up black. So I'm going to add a bit of white to my yellow. Let's see if I can do it that way. Good. I'll go back now and do that in a second when that dries a little bit. So while I got the white and the yellow out, I'm going to add a little bit of highlight to the edge of this here. I don't want to have it too white though. Nice and orangey. Like I said, this is our final details. There we go. That's nice, isn't it? And add a little bit more here. All these little details really brings your paintings to life. I'm just thinking, you know, maybe that's where the sun is, you know, it's coming in and hitting off some of these areas. All right, there's a little bit here. Not using very much paint. Best to use little paint this time so that, you know, so you can get big blobs. That way you can fix it up if you need to. Just scraping on that a little bit there. See, that's cool. That's good. And the boots, uh, so I'm going to clean my brush really good. I'm going to use the same brush. Clean my brush really good so I don't have any orange on it. And I'm going to take some white with the black. Make kind of a grayish color. And then I'm so just going to add a bit of highlight to our boots. Just a little bit here, just a little bit here, and a little bit here. Lay a little bit on there like that. I'm not going to do, don't need a big lot. And uh, a little bit here. And we already have that little white line there. That looks really nice. So leave that there. That's the canvas came through. So you don't even have to worry about that now. So now you got a bit of highlight on your boots. And if you find the highlight too strong, just tone it down a little bit by mixing it in with your little bit of, of a more grayish color. That's better. All right, so what else did I say we need to do? So we need to get these lines here. Like I said, you can use a marker. I'm just going to use a dark gray color and I'm going to There we go. So I have a, an angular brush. I'm using the top of the angular brush. But as long as your brush is flat, and got a chiseled edge, you should have no problem. 
or use a Sharpie. Now, let's back to your palette knife and do the same as we did before, some yellow and, and just uh, red and just if you want a few more little leaves falling down, get rid of that negative space. So nice to be able to make these leaves with a palette knife though, isn't it? Because it's got that nice round top on it, see? See, that's the kind I'm using right there. I'm going to use a toothpick to make those little dots. Alright, I'm going to use uh, to make the dots on the umbrella. I just want some yellow dots. It's not on the reference photo, but I thought it'd be cute, you know, So because it's kind of plain. So I will put some dots on there. Probably just you can have them wherever you want. It's your umbrella, it's your painting, and do whatever you want with it. There's no right or wrong, just do whatever makes you happy. some dots. I like the dots on the umbrella. It looks cute, doesn't it? So you can add your own little touches, right? You don't have to go by the reference photo or what I'm doing. You can add your own little touches. I like the dots. That's cute. All right. Let's do it. Let's just finish off the tree. So I'm going to take some burnt sienna and some yellow. Even a bit of red doesn't matter. A little bit of yellow to brighten it up a little bit. Just add some color to it. This seems to be kind of a, a whimsical, abstract sort of kind of painting. So oh, we said the sun was coming into the left. All right, so it had to be over here. I'll just get some yellow. If you find a palette knife too hard, just use a brush. So I'm just scratching that on there, just scraping it on. See that? Just scrape it on. It's kind of cute, isn't it? I'm using mostly yellow with the burnt sienna.
That's nice. Probably most of it's in shadow now because if you flip your palette knife this way and use it almost like it's inside out, that seems to it's better easier to get a bit of a grip on it there. Leave that. That's, you don't need much there. I don't want to ruin it on you. Don't do this if you don't. You don't have to do this. You can leave your tree trunk just brown if you want to. But I'm trying to add a little color to my painting there. So flip your palette knife around. All right, kind of adds that. I like the way it's adding that little bit of color, you know. And if you don't want to do this, you can add more leaves falling on your tree. Or add more leaves to your tree if you rather do it that way. Alright. That's cute. I like it. I like that. That's cute. I call it cute. My cute painting. Isn't that pretty? I hope you like it. It was fun. I enjoyed doing that one because it was pretty simple. And it looks nice. Got nice fall colors in there. And got nice and a complimentary colors. I showed you how to do complimentary colors. And so there we go. It's really nice. So let's put a little bit of yellow on the edge of our flat brush. And just add a little bit of highlight to the edge of that dark color that I got there. A little bit of yellow, maybe a little bit of white just to brighten it up a bit. And we will go on the edge here. And Because the light is shining on that too, right? Alright. Very gentle. Barely touch. Barely, barely touch. You wouldn't believe that these little tiny details really, really help a lot. I'm going to fade it out a little bit up there because that's... Yeah, I like that. There we go. That's our final, final... It's final. Very nice. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this painting and we will be doing lots more. So subscribe to get more videos. You can email me at alisonpryor at yahoo.com. Let me know what kind of paintings you like to do or send me your paintings so I can look at them for you. And you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.
Well, thank you very much for painting along with me and I hope you enjoyed that painting. And if you liked this video, then you can subscribe so you can get more free videos. And you can like, share if you could, if uh, you think it could help other people. And if you have any questions, just leave it in the comments section below. And uh, you, or you can email me at alisonpriorityahoo.com. So I'll see you in the next video.